I'm sorry, I know you can't buy these. Well, actually you can. I mean, nature's healing. Okay, maybe you can, maybe you can't. A bunch of Bitcoin mines got shut down in China, and I also found a lot of mason jars in stock at the hardware store. So maybe, possibly, you're gonna be able to buy a GPU soon. And I really, really, really wanna show you this 6900 XT because, good lord, ASRock, they've, uh, they've gone off the deep end. Let me explain why. Minimum of 1,000 watts for your power supply. And they are not joking about that. They've uh, bend the crap out of this. This is, of course, the, you know, 6900 XT. It's based on RDNA 2. Got the infinity cache for speeding things up. Uh, it's hardware ray tracing, 7 nanometer GPU, PCI Express 4, AMD FreeSync, video streaming up to 8K, VR ready, Fidelity FX. Oh, you know, we just saw the Fidelity FX super resolution, which is even going to be supported on competing cards. That might also ease the, uh, <laughs> the lack of GPUs in the market, although I think, you know, the global situation we find ourselves in, I, th I think the things are going to improve, probably. I mean, I've seen 6700 XTs in stock fairly regularly at the local micro center, so maybe that's good. You can at least join me in living vicariously, right? I'm actually pretty excited about this, because this is my first 6900 XT, or this has been my first 6900 XT. Quick installation guide. <laughs> is your machine already god tier? No? Okay, well, forget it. Just put it back in the box and send it to someone else. That is a CPU support bracket and a half. That's a spicy meatball. It's a monster and I love it. So we have two switches. Performance and quiet BIOS and LED on or off. You have three 8-pin power connections because, well, that's what you need when you're rocking a kajillion watts on this thing. I gotta say, I'm really, really digging the aesthetic on this, on this card. In terms of interfaces, you have three DisplayPort and one HDMI 2.1. So you're gonna get up to the LG CX display on Megadesk, as the case may be. Let's get this pretty cool green aesthetic goes really well with the Formula OC Z590. But that's enough oogling this card. Let's put it in a system. Azrock Formula OC, the RX 6900 XT and the Azrock Formula Z590 OC. I'm, I'm kind of digging this olive green color, but what happens when they come together? Yes, yes, the GPU supply shortages finally are easing. Let's take a look. All right, first up, Z590. I know, I know. You know, Team Red, Team Blue, that's a, that's a you preference, depending on what you wanna do and what your goals are. In terms of platform latency, IO latency, the fastest performance on an Optane P5800X, that's a, that's a really expensive SSD, this can do it. And the Formula OC is a really interesting board. It actually borrows a lot of features from Serverland. And also, the 6900 XT, which, out of the box, both of these, if you want to be close to the top 100 in 3D Mark without even really overclocking, well, you get the factory overclocked profile, you turn that on, it's set with a dip switch by default out of the box, at least it wasn't mine, and uh, you're going to be really close to the top 100 for systems all over the world because this is the latest and greatest hardware. I'm going to go out on a limb and say the 11900K is probably not for you unless you're chasing world records, overclocks, maximum clock speed, whatever. The 10850K, however, is just north of $200 US at our local micro center. You can find it online for a little bit more. At 200 and some dollars, eight cores, 10850K, 5.2 gigahertz, that is a deal. That is a deal and a half. And the Formula OC motherboard, if you're thinking about a higher end overclocking build, this has a lot of overclocking features. This is really good for like liquid nitrogen and stuff. I'd like to get more into that, but I'm gonna need one of the uh, the bearded masters to clue me in on that, and also I'm gonna have to have time to work on that. But out of the box, if you pick up a 10850K for this and the 6900 XT, you'll be insanely close to the 3D Mark Top 100. Not quite in the Top 100, but close, really close. 
One way that you know that things are getting really, really competitive is the pace at which server innovation is making its way into the desktop. One of the big things is surface mount memory slots. Yeah, so normally the memory slots have pins that go all the way through the printed circuit board. And that's fine, but these really high speed signals, uh, that's an opportunity for reflection. The signal can reflect because it's like, you know, uh, a pin through a metal barrel and there's lots of different paths that the electrons can take. The signal rate is so fast that if a, an electron randomly takes the wrong path, it'll arrive at a slightly different time. And so over time, as the motherboard heats up, and cools and heats up and cools and the connections wear a little bit. The characteristics of which signal is reflected where, how many electrons go which way, can change. And surface mount components have less area and they're physically smaller, so there's less opportunities for electrons to get lost on the way. Yeah, the physicists are uh, literally screaming at their monitor right now, but that's okay, we'll just ignore them for now because it's probably fine. I was almost one of you. No. So in the Formula OC, there's two memory slots to reduce reflections because the whole T topology, is it a T topology, is it daisy chain? Doesn't matter when you've only got two slots because one memory channel per slot. And also surface mount, it's not a through hole design. Definitely designed for overclocking and on the box they advertise 5600 megahertz. I don't have memory that will get anywhere near that fast, but I do have some 4000 megahertz memory that has reasonably fast timings. That's what we used in here. The crucial ballistics memory, 4000 megahertz, but it was overclocked. It was overclocked to the nth degree, overclocked so far that it wasn't even completely stable. Even with all the ridiculous, insane overclocking, I was only able to brush, you know, position 97, 98, which shows you that everybody that's doing the insane overclocking, they've got liquid nitrogen and really exotic cooling and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we're within a few hundred points in the out of the box configuration, running at defaults with good cooling on that 10850K. So if you look at the benchmarks and our 3D mark results, it's actually pretty awesome. One game in particular that I was excited to try with the 6900 XT was SNKRX. I was curious, could I break the 4000 FPS barrier? And indeed I did. How do I explain SNKRX? It's a, uh, it's Snake meets a roguelike. It's like saying it's a Pac-Man RPG. I don't know, but it works somehow. It's a lot of fun. So the 6900 XT is basically a three slot card. It's a full three slot card. So if you have anything that's gonna run adjacent to this, make sure that the card can breathe adequately because the fans will move a lot of air. It requires three eight pin connections and it will absolutely use that if you go insanely overclocking, you know, crazy. Asterisk, so each one of those connections can provide about 300 watts on the VGA side because you get three uh, 12 pins, technically they're they, they, like, like down rated for like 75 watts, but you have to use larger diameter wire to do that. So there's three pins here because they want at least two good ones, as in two not on the same cable. Don't use the same six plus two pin cable for your VGA cards. You should know that by now. I think everybody is saying that at this point, but just, just to drive the point home. It's a one cable that's got two connectors plug into your GPU, don't do that if your GPU only has two connectors. And so with three connectors, you're basically assured that that doesn't happen because these cars will ramp from not a lot of power usage to insane power usage really quickly. That's one of the places they squeezed out more performances by making the, the, the GPU ramp up quicker. And by ramping up quicker and ramping down quicker, uh, there's less energy wasted idling which means that there's less heat, which means that when computations are needed, you get the thermal headroom to deal with it. That's how insane we are with, uh, you know, mechanical engineering of stuff that gamers want to go fast. And we're finally maybe at the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of GPU and CPU supply. So that's pretty exciting. Other killer features of the Formula OC board include, it's got a little OLED screen that's gonna give you a readout. And it's really built, like you could use this as a daily driver. It's got a good sound card. It has good other features on the motherboard. It's not just for overclocking. It's like a combination Ferrari minivan, which normally in the real world that doesn't work. But in this case, as far as I can tell, it does work. It is an EATX motherboard, keep that in mind. That'll limit your case selection a little bit, but I think it was a good choice of ASRock to make this EATX because they've crammed a lot on here. Now it does also have three M.2 ports, although if you want PCI Express 4, you do need that 11th gen CPU. 14 nanometers like your mom's chili where it's like, it's leftover, but the longer it stays in the fridge to a point, uh, the more delicious and spicy that it gets. It's like, oh, it's even spicier than I remember. Yup, there you go. 
for the overclocking beyond just the direct OLED readout showing you the status on the board, there's also a ton of buttons and controls at the edge of the motherboard. So you can use this in a workbench configuration, uh, juice the clock a little bit with the plus and minus buttons, maybe bring it down. And then you've got a one, two, three profile button so you can have your regular desktop profile and then the, oh, I've switched out my regular cooling for an LN2 pot. That's number two because LN2, right? That's how that works. Now I know what you're thinking. Desktop CPUs basically dominate the leaderboards on the uh, you know on the 3D Mark website, we've got you know Team Red and Team Blue configurations. There's a lot of 6900 XT populating those those top leaderboards. What if you could you know have a ringer? What if you throw in something just insanely powerful? This is 80 cores of 10 nanometer Xeon insanity, and even disabling you know, all of the cores, but like 10 or 15, cause 3D Mark only uses like 10 cores. Uh, this doesn't get you there. This doesn't, this doesn't do anything for your CPU score. It does a little bit, but not really in terms of like your CPU score and your performance. 40, 10 nanometer CPUs per socket. And it turns out that when you're doing gaming and stuff like that, this kind of thing doesn't really help you. In a nutshell, this is not what this platform is designed for, but I did try it just to see what would happen and it is still close to the top 100. So if you need a really insane workstation that you can also game on, you're really not missing out on much in terms of performance if you you know, slam a 6900 XT into a dual Xeon 80 core workstation. It basically works fine. All right, I've gotta get back to my SNK RX games. This has been a quick look at the Z590 OC Formula and the OC Formula 6900 XT. I really, really like the performance and what ASRock is doing of both of these products. Like I say, if you're team blue, 10850K is a deal in this board. It's still fine for desktop use, but you can go nuts with overclocking if overclocking is your goal. If you think the overclocking is a little over the top, well, you can still pair the 6900 XT with some of the other boards. Check out the other boards that I've reviewed and see what you think because I've reviewed a lot of motherboards and you should check that out. Come to the forum, ask questions. I'll do my best to try to help you and answer. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.